welcome to Old Iron Machine Works. Uh, this video will be a little bit different. Um, this video will be scrapping out some copper wire and uh, making a little jig that will uh, peel off that outside jacket off of it. So let's get started. There's approximately 32 sections, about 12 foot long, um, of the heavy copper. So I knew I wasn't going to probably ever use the tool when I make up for it again. So I started with an old uh, gear that that's actually a Waukesha gear drive water pump. The gear is what it is, and I started with it. And you can see the cable already fits through it. But I ended up opening it up and giving me a little bit more clearance. And I just wanted to make up something that I can clamp in a vise. And then this is a pipe cutter roller. And I wanted to be able to take it, sharpen it up, and just make a little fixture that'll just uh, bolt right to the uh, gear. Right there's the bolt holes. You know, and just something that will bolt right up. But I, I didn't want to get too crazy building something. Um, you know, for something that, you know, will probably never be used again. Here I'm just enlarging the hole a little bit just so when we hand feed the cable through it it'll just slide through a little bit easier and then I put a little bevel on it. These are guide rings that are used in natural gas compressor valves and I just so happened to find a couple of them that fit the inside of the bearing perfect and accepts a 5 16 bolt. Here I'm just making up some brackets out of some old square tubing. This bracket I didn't think through uh, far enough and I put the holes kind of squared and I ended up having to make another one and offset the holes uh, to keep the bearing from touching the gear. Okay. 
Here I got the cutter wheel bottomed out pretty deep into the copper and I thought that that is more than deep enough it should work awesome and now these little plates will get welded and just kind of keep the the bearing and the cutter from wanting to pull apart Here I got it all welded up and I did not put any weld on that side. It's going to be right up tight against uh, the gear and everything's going to be pulling all that bracket up against the gear. So I decided to plenty enough weld on that. I actually had several designs that I was kind of playing around with in my head, you know, for making something to, uh, you know, to do this wire. but. I kept reminding myself um, 32 times and it'll probably never be used again. So I just decided to just make it to where I could just grind a little groove down through the copper, uh, put the cutting wheel in, put the bolt in, and go. Uh, rather than getting too fancy because the more time I spend on making something, uh, less profit there is in scrapping out the wire. As I got it to this point, I kept thinking, okay, what if it wants to squish the wire and not cut? So I decided to add a couple side pieces. So I dropped one of the bearings to where I only had the one bearing. And then I went ahead and uh, just bent a couple uh, one inch by a quarter guides. And I was hoping that that would keep the wire from wanting to pinch and uh, let the cutter do its thing. Here I'm just kind of grinding through the outside coating. Okay, once we feed the cable into here, then this wheel, we're going to take that wheel out, and then that wheel's going to set right down in there. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with my channel you've seen Jack my future son-in-law and a couple other videos uh, anyway I kind of made him a proposition on uh, you know on the copper wire if he wanted to come and uh, work with Ben stripping it you know so here uh, me and Jack it's been about maybe three hours um, stripping it but I always enjoy um, I always enjoy work, having a chance to work with them doing projects already so you know always fun now I was very confident that my tool was just going to work awesome, so I'm actually on the tractor and Jack's over filming on the table, and to my surprise, it did not work the way I expected uh, first go around. Okay, it did not, it did not slice all the way through, which is surprising. Okay. <laughs> okay, here I got Jack pulling, uh, this is the second cable, and I got Jack pulling it through, uh, so I can just get a better look at, at what's going on. And if you look really closely, the wheel, I got it nice and sharp, and I kind of got it working like a pizza roller. Uh, unfortunately, what it was doing is wanting to climb up on top of the outside shielding. And I knew, okay, I need more of a knife, so all I ended up doing is just tightening up the bolt so the wheel would not turn. And night and day right there you could see the wheel just plunge right down and cut beautiful from that point on
the buy scripts did not make a difference. I didn't know if it was wanting to spread the side pieces out a little bit or not, but uh, the buy scripts had no effect right at all. There. So they came off right away. Where you see the soldered section right by the nut, what I did is I needed to be able to put the cutter wheel and a washer on the inside of the bracket. And being that I had to take the cutter wheel in and out every time, I wanted to silver solder the washer just, just so I wouldn't have to fuss around with trying to line it up also when I put the wheel in and out. Okay, on this one, we've got the bugs. We got the bugs ironed out. What I had to do is tighten this up. With the wheel rolling, it was just wanting to roll up on top of it. Once I anchor it, it's working great. So we're gonna like go much faster on this one. Much better. And we're using the Kubota for our power supply. There's 32 sections there that each have an eyelet at the end, uh, which made it really nice. You know, we just put a hook on the eyelet to pull it through. Once the copper was stripped off, and with the zip wheel, we just cut the eyelet off, uh, just so we didn't get docked. Um, for the eyelids. After we realized that the wheel needed to be tight and not be able to roll, this was the only one. It was very obvious that the wheel was rolling because it wasn't cutting all the way through. And basically I just had to tighten it up and that was it.
Now your best price for copper is number one shiny. But I knew that this cable was going to be borderline of making number one and there was a chance it could go number two. Number two just means it's a finer strand like a lot of uh, battery cables or should I say welding cables. They'll go in at number two because they're just a much finer wire. Uh, the finer the wire the more waste there is when they melt it down uh, so it doesn't take quite as much. And this ended up going number two. Now this cable could have been loaded up and hauled just the way it was without uh, stripping the outside shield. Um, unfortunately for this particular cable it paid about half the price uh, if you hauled it in the way it was and uh, the outside ended up being roughly anywhere from 8 to 10 percent of the total weight was in the outside casing uh, so it definitely paid when you're getting twice as much the copper you know it's slightly lighter but you're making twice as much per pound so in this case it was uh, a no-brainer uh, stripping it Okay, our last cable. Here I'm just getting a ballpark figure of what the outside uh, shielding weighed and I got a total of four sections on there uh, to make up 10 pounds so each section of the wire was you know two and a half pounds of uh, shielding. Sometimes different scrap yards can get a little funny with you so we decided to cut all those off just in case they wanted to play games with uh, dropping the price for the uh, for the eyelets. And you can see where it's a little bit fine. Um, that's why it went number two copper. Here I just got it on an old Fairbank scale, you know, that I have. Quick little update, what's been going on. I've been extremely busy lately. And I have moved, uh, my day job consists of a lot of rebuilding natural gas compressor valves. And I have now moved all the valve rebuilding to my home shop um, haven't been filming a whole lot or putting any videos together of it um, but hopefully I'll be able to find more time to get some videos out a little more often than I have been anyway as always um, I appreciate you taking the time to stop by the channel and if you're not a subscriber and if you like this kind of content hit the subscribe button and thumbs up are always great uh, thanks for watching.